in the previous podcast, we briefly introduced employee traits and behaviors that affected either positively or negatively the work environment. So these traits and behaviors end up combining into different types of competencies within organizations. So in this lecture, we're going to try and focus on answering the question, what does it mean to be a competent team member? Let's begin by examining two different types of competencies. The first is technical competency. This asks the question, do employees have the ability to do their job well? We should think of this as how we look on our CVs and with our portfolios of work and our professional accomplishments. Technical competence is therefore the combination of our knowledge, our skills, and our attitudes. In terms of our knowledge, one of the things that unfortunately a lot of new graduates downplay is the knowledge they've actually gained through their courses. But this is vital for establishing ourselves as competent young professionals. But as our careers develop, it's not enough just to rely on what we did in school. Good professionals are constantly updating and upskilling. When you look at a mid-career professional CV or a late career professional CV, it's clear that they have spent much of their time and much of their career improving their knowledge. This might be with advanced degrees, it might also be with certifications, attending webinars or conferences, participating in knowledge creation. Let me give you an example. One of my former DBA students, which is a doctorate of business administration, and that's something that's aimed at mid to late career professionals who are working to improve their knowledge in their specialist area. Anyhow, he was a vice president at MasterCard Global, and while he was my student, he was also in charge of MasterCard's business and innovation across Africa. So he was coordinating something like 40 different countries and thousands of employees and some major projects like the introduction of a national ID card in Nigeria that linked core services all together in a secure and an effective way. He wanted to do his DBA for career development. So even someone at this stage in his career with 30 years of experience still focused on knowledge development. Then we have our applied skill as well. It's no use to have all the knowledge in the world if we can't also practice and vice versa. Practice without knowledge is also pointless because we will make errors. So in terms of applied skills, this is something we can gain with experience, but that's also the point of developing portfolio materials. When you're at your early stages in your career, when you're still at university, this means jumping onto projects when you can, even if it's more work, just to get the experience to take on short-term placements and generally build a portfolio of practice. But like knowledge, this is something that you develop over time. In our field today, the five biggest skills to develop are communication skills, including presentation, interpersonal and written, research skills, technical skills, international or intercultural skills, and critical thinking or problem solving skills. So when you're putting together your portfolios and you're developing yourself as a professional, these are the key broad skill sets that you should be interested in developing. Then as we specialize within our careers, different skills come to the foreground and it will largely depend on the specializations in terms of what matters most during skill development, but being able to tangibly demonstrate what you've done is essential. Finally, technical competence is not possible without the right attitude. Organizations want people who demonstrate the willingness, collaborative skills, lifelong learning, adaptability, and agility in, in action, because those are the attitudes that help ensure the knowledge and the applied skill development continues. So this means when we're talking about technical competence, it's about the field but it's also about showing continual and steady development. This begins at year one, and it continues throughout your career. The second type of competence that we have to be able to maintain is relational competence. In a work setting, relational competence refers to characteristics we develop that facilitate acquiring, developing, and maintaining mutually satisfying relationships in the workplace. So relational work skills is a term that's used to describe the ways that we interact as professionals with one another. And it goes beyond knowledge of business models and professional experience to include personal traits. So just like with professional skills, relational skills differ and they really differ from person to person, but they can also be developed. 
There are two global domains of these types of relational skills. Mm -hmm. The first type of them are the initiation skills, the ability to develop relationships. And the second domain are the enhancement, is the enhancement domain, and that's our ability to maintain or to deepen relationships. So if we look at the first one real quick, the initiation attributes. This can include things like self-confidence, assertiveness, social interest, good communication skills, likability, and extroversion. You know, if we think of a couple of specific examples of these, of these types of initiation skills, we can think of reliability. So when people know that they can count on us, we become known as an important team player. So it's an important, an important relational skill in every profession, whether it relates to showing up for work on time, performing duties as assigned, meeting crucial deadlines. So being reliable is a strong initiation skill because it demonstrates that we can be trusted within an organizational setting. A second example of these kinds of initiation skills is our influence. So having the ability to effectively persuade and influence others is a valuable re relational workplace skill. And, and of course it can directly connect to sales and marketing positions, but being more broadly a skilled negotiator is really important in across a lot of different domains, including crafting deals, di di discussing contract agreements, those types of things. But an influential employee is someone who can really initiate skills, initiate relationships effectively, and then later on hopefully develop them. But that's all part of the influence. So these initiation attributes are really critical. But likewise, so are the enhancement. You know, it's not enough that we can just start new relationships in the workplace effectively, but we also need to make sure that we can maintain or deepen them. So enhancement attributes include traits like empathy, altruism, social awareness, listening skills, and flexibility. So I want to talk about three examples of these that, that kind of drive this home as part of the relational competence. So first, for example, is empathy. Being able to consistently look at and understand perspectives from others' points of view is a relational skill that's highly valued across a lot of arenas. So these types of employees are able to put themselves in other people's position and perform their professional responsibilities with a mindset in place that focuses on others. So it's a trait that's really desirable across a lot of different industries. Patience is another enhancement attribute, and it's really valuable when it comes to dealing with picky or difficult clients in, in our terms, but it's also for complex and long-term projects that it allows us to, to keep focused on, on a future orientation and maintaining the integrity of the process without really losing our interest and losing our professionalism. Again, they're assets when it comes to smoothing out differences or mediating disputes. And the third example I wanted to offer for these types of relational competencies is trustworthiness. Trustworthy employees are obviously invaluable assets to employers who not only feel comfortable because the person's honesty and ethical values, but they believe that they will do what they say when they say will do it. As a form of relational competence, this is something that is needed by team leaders, project managers, supervisors, but it's something that we can demonstrate as we go throughout our career development. You know, so if we think about all of this in context, relational skills and the technical skills that we have put together demonstrates the type of competence that organizations are looking for from their employees. So it's a lot to develop as we go through our careers, but it's a starting point. And these are all things that we want to put together for ourselves and demonstrate to the best of our abilities. When we move beyond the types of competency into more specific types of skills, then we also get a number of different types of skills that are consistently demonstrated by effective team members. So let's look at some examples. We'll start with intellectual skills. The, to demonstrate intellectual skills means that an employee can sort through all the information that we get in our positions, identify the relevant information from different sources, 
figure out the salient issues, the connections. And so intellectual skills are about being analytical and creative at the same time. Second is results orientation. This answers the question, can you work in line with the goals of the organization and demonstrate work towards accomplishing them? Of course, as I've already mentioned, and the repetition should indicate how important it is, but the next key skill are interpersonal and intercultural skills. And, and it makes sense. After all, we're talking about working in teams, and it refers to our ability to relate to the feelings and the needs of others, both being sympathetic and empathetic, like we talked about in the relationship competencies. A fourth critical skill that must be developed by successful professionals are planning and organizing skills. In most settings, we have a lot of different work going on all at once. So can we use the information that's available to us and organize our time without having to be constantly led by our bosses? Can we efficiently use the time we have at work? And can we often multitask, that is, be on multiple teams at once while meeting all of the deadlines? What's this team orientation? Yes, we're all working for our own CVs and frankly our own career advancement, but the reality is that we rely on our teams to do the work, so we need to have a strong team orientation. That's that relational competency we were talking about. In our industry in particular, a team orientation is vital. People who lack it tend not to do particularly well. Sixth is maturity. This is asking pretty simple questions like, are we responsible? Can we handle pressure? And can we deal with difficult situations? Let me share my favorite story about this. I was working on an event and we relied on this experimental computer program. It was in the late 90s and some of these types of programs were prone to crashing a lot more than they are now. So at a fairly inopportune time, the program crashed and we weren't sure what data we had lost. We were starting to get everything put back together, figure out what had gone on when one of our colleagues clearly lost his mind. He laid on our big conference table, stuck his legs in the air, and threw basically a two-year-old's temper tantrum. The other four of us, including the boss, stood there. Our mouths were agape, and, and we don't, I'm not sure how long we stood there. Thankfully, our boss came back to reality first and ushered the rest of us out of the room before we said anything that would have been harsh, and that wouldn't have helped get things back on track, but he could deal with that situation, get him calmed down, and then bring us back in to keep his task focused. But we don't ever want to be in a situation where we're with a grown person throwing a temper tantrum. But you know, across the years, I've seen people lose their tempers in meetings, do outrageous things, and honestly, it's always about the lack of maturity. We don't ever want to be that person. Finally, and this is a skill that's probably a bit more nebulous than a lot of the others, but having presence or charisma is an important skill to develop. Really important because we can create a positive first impression and stand out tactfully. It means that we're good verbal and nonverbal communicators. So, of course, there are going to be people who are naturally more charismatic, but this is something we can all develop to varying degrees, and it's largely down to our own efficacy. Efficacy is our belief in that our ability to do something and that by acting there will be a positive outcome. So when we build this confidence in our other skills, the harder and more task related ones, presence typically comes along with it. So it's being willing and being confident to say something that gets noticed in a lot of different organizational contexts and that kind of person is much more likely to stand out. That's why it's an important skill to develop.